Hi. So today we're going to talk about brand registry. Um, and I wanted to start off right here in our private label panel and go over a few of the features um, explaining how to use brand registry and some of the different menu options. And most importantly, a step that a lot of sellers skip is um, the connection of the brand to your store and the brand to the ASINs as well as uh, adding users onto your brand registry. Um, so within your, your brand registry panel, um, when you log in to your homepage, you'll see uh, how to report violations and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but also your registered brands, the total quantity of registered brands here will show um, your connected trademarks. And there's a neat feature in here called an impact dashboard. Now, if you are a relatively new seller and you know, the last couple of years and you have properly synced your brand node to your store and your brand to your ASINs, uh, likely a lot of the protections uh, from brand registry will be automatic and passive. So you can see here in, in this particular private label, um, there's been uh, action on uh, 973 uh, accounts. Uh, these are ASIN modification attempts. So could be another seller uh, attempting to change detail or content on the ASIN. Um, or it could be, for example, um, another product that's trying to embed uh, the brand name, which is dried um, into their listing. So the system's gonna protect and prevent um, automatically, assuming you've got all the syncs. So let's go over that um, first. Um, in your brand registry account, under uh, access to selling benefits, you should see uh, the selling accounts, their names and your brand synced properly like this. If it's not, um, that means um, your trademark may be enrolled, but you haven't properly synced it to your store yet. So what you want to do is add selling account. It'll walk you through that process. You'll likely need the merchant token, which you can get from inside your account settings uh, menu here, account info, and then merchant token. You're going to copy and paste that and you know, sync the account. Um, we, we also mentioned the user roles and permissions uh, earlier on the video that is going to be under your settings menu and then user permissions. You have to make sure that you're assigning um, proper permissions um, to various uh, people within your organization that may uh, have the ability to perform action on your behalf. Um, you can be admin, rights owner, or registered agent. So if you have a third party um, managing your brand, you're going to want to provide them with uh, registered agent status. In some cases, also admin, so they could add users. Um, be very careful with whom you provide rights ownership roles to because they truly have you know, unlimited rights uh, to the brand, similar as yourself if you're the brand owner. Um, one action we may want to perform um, regularly is to just do a search on our brand on Amazon and kind of see what comes up. I like to also do a, a control F um, and just make sure that there aren't, um, uh, there are not um, other, for example, um, brands that may be using the name in the title. We can see here the only searches are finding actual uh, dried products that have occupied that brand name. Um, if you see your brand, for example, in a competing item, you need to file a complaint. So you're going to grab the ASIN from the competitor. You're going to go back into um, the, the brand registry panel and report a violation. You can also get this link from your homepage in your brand registry. Paste the ASIN here. It will pop up with a little icon of that product, a thumbnail, and then you'll go through the process of telling Amazon like, hey, um, we're the rights owner, the trademark owner, and this particular ASIN is using our brand name in their images, in their title, their bullets, price description, what have you. So that's how you'll file a complaint. You'll get an email typically within 24 to 48 hours, and Amazon will sideline that ASIN, alert the other seller to the, the actual issue, and um, remove it until that other seller or brand owner removes your brand name from their listing. So that's how we use brand registry. Um, there's also some cool features in your another program um, is transparency. 
Um, you can read about this in your spare time, but it essentially serializes each piece that you produce. And that would be production sort of uh, agnostic of who you sell the product to, right? And it needs to be holistic because Amazon needs to track and serialize every piece so that, for example, uh, it's not inventory that's on the Walmart shelf, right? Goes to clearance aisle, someone buys it as brand new unopened, but then goes to resell it on Amazon as new. Amazon considers that inventory used. So it will block those kind of products and resellers from even um, adding listings. It will also help uh, enforce uh, what's known as gating. So you can gate or allow disallow certain sellers of your brand. Um, so the transparency program is actually quite cool, but it does have a few steps to get set up. Um, so all in all, brand registry, it is very good. It's very strong. It can be automatic, but you have to sync your uh, brand to your store. And once you've done so, you need to perform a full update via um, an inventory um, file, um, add products via upload, and perform an update in full on every ASIN, um, syncing the brand to the ASIN. And then this is going to give you those automatic protections that we talked about uh, earlier in the video. Um, and, and likely the rest will be passive. It will then scour the site and look for any violators and remove and sideline them. Um, so um, that sync process is relatively important. You do need to do it. Amazon really is not going to tell you to do it. You can create a case inside Seller Central and ask, um, but it's important to always sync inline uh, brand to email, brand to store, brand to ASINs. And uh, hope this video helps some folks. If you have any questions or comments, leave those below. Thank you.